covering the entire Piedmont Triad and everywhere you are. WXII 12 News at 5 starts now. Um, it's just a house, so, it, you know, it's, we're safe and that's what matters. It's, it's tough to look at, you know, and I think the more I look at it, the tougher it becomes. Mm -hmm. Resilience amid tragedy tonight. Heartache in the heartland as Oklahoma deals with the aftermath of what's now being characterized as an EF5 tornado that ripped apart lives. Good evening and thank you for joining us for WXII 12 News at 5. WXII 12 News is joining the American Red Cross in helping the victims of the tornado in Oklahoma. Just call or text the numbers at the bottom of the screen. More on the Helping the Heartland Telethon in just a moment, but first, the devastation is almost too much to comprehend. At least 24 people are dead, including at least nine children, countless others impacted by the storm system that hit yesterday afternoon. Tonight, a search and rescue effort continues in more, a suburb just outside of Oklahoma City as crews sift through rubble and other debris searching for survivors. Those who did come out alive are sharing their tales of survival and describing something most people can't begin to imagine. I've never seen anything like it. Never heard anything like it. It's one of the worst experiences I've ever had in my life. I'm 55 years old and I've never experienced anything like this. That man was able to escape the storm in an underground shelter at his home. Many others not as fortunate. That tornado packed winds pushing 200 miles an hour and cut a path over a mile wide and almost 20 miles long across central Oklahoma. <laughs> It was an emotional scene at this elementary school, one of two hit by the tornado. Parents were seen frantically searching for their children who sought shelter in the hallways of the school along with faculty. President Obama today talked about the school children in an address to the nation. Uh, among the victims were young children uh, trying to take shelter in the safest place they knew, uh, their school. So our prayers are with the people of Oklahoma today. The president says a town of Moore, quote, needs to get everything it needs right away, and he's pledging to do just that. He's declared a major disaster in Oklahoma, ordering federal aid to supplement state and local recovery efforts. North Carolina schools are far from Oklahoma's tornado alley. But they do have emergency plans that are ready to deal with natural disasters. Bill O'Neill is live in Greensboro to tell us more about that. Bill? Guys, Guilford County students all take part in an annual tornado drill. Safety officials tell us that the school system monitors dangerous weather and alerts individual schools about tornado watches as well as warnings. They will begin to take their students, put them in, in the, uh, as they plan, do their drills, put them in a place such as a hallway or a sound structure, short span roof, a, a location uh, where they can get that protection, get against the wall in that tuck position with their hands uh, behind their head in that kneeling position and wait for the event to, uh, to impact, if it's gonna impact their particular area, and then wait till they get the all clear sign. School officials say that parents should take note as well and have tornado plans in place at home. Back to you guys. Well, as we told you a few minutes ago, WXII 12 is teaming up with the American Red Cross to assist the victims of the tornado. And you can help as well. Michelle Kennedy joins us now live with details of our Helping the Heartland Telethon. Michelle. Well, thank you, Cameron. Yes, we have uh, several volunteers who have just come out this evening to help us out and allow folks at home to do something to help out since we are not there to actually help with the recovery process and help those folks after the storm. One thing you can do is to make a donation. We are asking folks to call the number that you see at the bottom of your screen, 245-5750. We've got a lot of calls already coming in to the Red Cross right now. Also, you can text by simply going uh, 9099 on your your text messaging and that will automatically make a $10 donation to the Red Cross. Now you can also designate when, whether you want this money to go to disaster relief for any disasters that are happening currently across the nation or the 2013 storms. Now Red Cross is already on the ground when these storms hit yesterday within, uh, when this F5 hit folks in Moore, Oklahoma. They had already been responding to Edmond and Shawnee in Oklahoma so they have been serving folks there uh, making sure folks have food and water after the storms hit and of course 
helping the first responders as well as folks are still trying to dig through the rubble and make sure folks have been recovered safely and hopefully uh, have survived uh, the storm. So again, we'd love for you to call in. Uh, we have a lot of volunteers out here this evening. We'll be expanding their coverage uh, on the telethon coming up in just a little bit. But one thing you can do at home right now is to call and make a donation or text simply by texting 9099 and that's a $10 donation. Cameron? Thank you, Michelle. We'll check back within you, with you a little bit later. That tornado in Oklahoma is bringing a sense of deja vu for some folks here in our area. It was back in 2011 that a tornado ripped through Davidson County, leaving damage behind in that community. Margaret Johnson joins us live now in Lexington with that story. Well, good evening to you. You'll remember that that storm killed three people here, and it still haunts uh, Jamie Rummage. Now, this is what the EF2 tornado did to her home when it slammed into Davidson County in November of 2011. Jamie, her husband and son, hid in a bathroom while the storm ripped the rest of their home to pieces. So she can identify with what the storm victims in Oklahoma are going through. She says she hasn't been able to pull herself away from the coverage, and she hasn't been able to stop crying either. She even wishes she could be in Oklahoma right now. Even though I know there's probably nothing I could do, I, I want to go there so bad. I, I want to just pack up the car and go down there, if nothing else, to tell those people that you, you will get through this. It, it seems so bad now, and it seems so insurmountable when it first happens. But you do, you, you do one day at a time. It just, it'll get better every single day for them. And I wish, I wish I could go down there and just say that to them. Well, Jamie is finally back in her home now, and she says her prayers go out to the people in Oklahoma. Back to you. Thanks a lot, Margo. And we will bring you continuing coverage from more Oklahoma here on WXII 12 News at 5 and on WXII 12 News at 6. And remember, you can always get the latest on WXII 12.com. Well, the good news in Oklahoma, as well as the Southern Plains states so far today, no tornado touchdowns. We do have some active severe thunderstorm warnings now east of Dallas, and you see the watch boxes. They are spreading from central Texas all the way up into western Tennessee, including Mississippi as well. There are some thunderstorms that are potent, but no tornado warnings again. You can see that massive line moving. Also watching the storms kind of spreading to the east, resulting in a severe thunderstorm watch that is out for eastern Tennessee. It's on the other side of the mountains and that is up until 10 o'clock tonight. We have got that muggy air mass out there. It is steamy, but we have not seen a lot of development as far as rain goes this afternoon. Had a few thunderstorms earlier across parts of Randolph, Guilford and as well as uh, Alamance counties, but those have pushed to the south and east. Right now we've got a heavy downpour just west of Stewart, but that is all that is on the radar map. For this evening, we could still see a stray storm. Temperatures will be warm in the upper 70s. Later on tonight, it's warm. It's muggy, perhaps a lingering shower. Temperatures dipping down into the low 70s around 10 o'clock. Let's check in with Chris now to see how traffic is moving on this Tuesday. Well, Lenny, we have a couple of accidents. One in Winston-Salem South Main Street at Clemensville Road, and in Greensboro, we have an accident at Bridford Parkway at Hilltop Road. Take a look at our traffic camera. You're looking live. I-40 at Business 85 in Greensboro. Everything's moving right along just like the rest of the triad. Stay updated on Twitter at WXI. Four people, including an infant, were hurt today in a two-vehicle accident. It happened around 1130 this morning in the area of Fisher Ferry Road and Cedar Lodge Road in Thomasville. Investigators say the Dodge Durango drove into the path of a Toyota Highlander. The driver of that Highlander, 29-year-old Monica Persiani, was airlifted to Wake Forest Baptist Medical Center. We are told she is in critical condition tonight. Her 11-month-old daughter is in stable condition. The other driver is 19-year-old Zach Poole and his passenger, Amber Kincaid. They are in stable condition. A fuel spill at a shopping center parking lot in Guilford County has been cleaned up. Investigators say the truck was making a U-turn in the parking lot of the Food Lion near the corner of Highway 70 and Rock Creek Dairy Road in Sedalia when it hit a light pole. The truck spilled about 50 gallons of diesel fuel, but no one was hurt. The three men hoping to be the next police chief at Winston-Salem were part of a community forum this afternoon. They answered questions from residents and attendants and also questions submitted online. Current Winston-Salem Police Chief Scott Cunningham plans to retire in June. 
Police in Greensboro are going to be hitting the streets tomorrow in hopes of learning more about the death of a teenager whose body was found in a local lake. Police want to know who killed Dorian Jackson. Back in March, the 18 year old's body was found in Lake Townsend. Autopsy results show that he died from a gunshot wound. Police officers plan to canvas a neighborhood in the southwestern area of High Point to Lake uh, tomorrow evening about 530 in hopes of getting some answers in this case. Guilford County school officials have named a new principal for Allen Middle School. Last week it was announced that due to poor test scores, the current principal and several teachers would be replaced. Today it was announced that Dr. Sheila Gorham, currently the principal of Wiley Elementary, will serve as Allen Middle School's principal beginning July 1st. More arrests from the ongoing NAACP protests at the General Assembly will bring you the latest numbers coming up. Also, jurors hear closing arguments in a high-profile murder trial. Then we'll show you how one local collegiate athletic department raised awareness about the importance of community service. And more of our live coverage as WXII 12 teams up with the American Red Cross to help the heartland. You're watching WXII 12 News at 5.